Quarter Talk, we are back. We are here with Amber Laybrock, who now leads the rankings at PFL after a viral first round head kick knockout last time out. And she'll return June 16th in Atlanta against the last season's champion and million dollar winner, Larissa Pacheco. So, Amber, how are you doing today? Um, how, yeah, how's training? How's everything going? It's good. It's good. It's been a great camp. Um, it's a little bit, at least for me, getting used to this kind of tournament tournament style. It's been the first time in a long time where I've fought so close together. Um, so camp's been good. Been trying to like prioritize recovery. Uh, today's kind of a half day for me because I'm getting ready to leave for Vegas tomorrow. So mm -hmm. I got to like pack and do all that good stuff. But yeah, camp's been great. I'm really excited. I can't wait to be in Atlanta. I've never been there before. And I can't wait to, you know, face off with Larissa and get this, get this party started. So when you look at Larissa, like, is it, do you think it's in your benefit that you face her early on in the tournament, especially coming off of, you know, gaining six points, earning six points in the tournament? Yeah. I mean, it, like, if you're going to face your, your hardest opponent, you might as well do it while your body's still in one piece. You know, I kind of came off of, uh, not really much of a fight, uh, not saying that Mar Martina wasn't like a worthy opponent, it just what happened happened. Um, so my my body breakdown is really just from training. It's not really from the physicalness of a fight. And I think that we were going to face each other one way or another. So why not get it out of the way early and, you know, hit the rest of this tournament hard. Yeah. Cause I always try to put myself in your shoes and it's like, you know, yeah, if you're going to face your hardest opponent, uh, especially coming off of, you know, all the points, like the full, full amount of points. So like to explain it to people, uh, PFL, it's like for a win, you get three points, you get, Three points for a bonus points for a first round finish, two points for a second round finish, one point extra point for a uh, third round finish. So, yeah, um, coming off of maximum points, maybe you want on paper your most difficult opponent to be the next one. And after yeah. that, you're like, hey, you know, I can just because even if you win a decision, you know, that's that's three points. Yeah, that's a that's a guarant for me, a win. A win is guaranteed a spot in the playoffs. So that's pretty much, you know, what what mm -hmm. we're shooting for. I mean, of course, we would love another six points, five points, four points. But honestly, like all respects to Larissa, I'm not expecting anything like that. I'm expecting it to be a nice three round war. I'm expecting it to be a nice long fight. Um, and yeah, but either way, I'm going to get my hand raised, whether it's all the way to the end or in the beginning or somewhere in the middle. Like I'm not. I'm not willing to leave that cage without my hand raised. Uh, this is my tournament and I am the underdog and I want to show all the other underdogs, like don't count yourself out. Like everyone else might count you out, but don't count yourself out because you are really the only person that matters, especially in a sport like this. Yeah. Do you feel like the pressure has been lifted off you or it, you know, to the extent that you felt pressure? Uh, I know. I know. I never have pressure. I didn't have pressure the first fight. Nobody knows who I am. I'm the dark core. I mean, people know me, but like, you know, and all my pressure got taken off it back in the Bellator days. You know, I used to put a, a lot of pressure on myself. It was all about winning and winning and winning. And I ended up losing and losing and losing. So for me, there is no pressure. I'm just here to perform. I just want to perform to the best of my abilities and do it against some really tough chicks. And I don't want to take easy fights. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I could have, you know, easily have gotten a super, super easy fight and skated through to the playoffs, but I'd rather prove myself and I rather like show the world and show myself that I can do it. Um, she is a 155 champ, but this is 145. It's my division and yeah, I'm here. There we go. Does, does the training differ at all? Like, how do you adapt your training sort of to like the tournament style more? You know, you were saying, um, you mentioned it, you know, I, earlier. I think this time around, I did kind of prioritize um, recovery a little bit more. I made sure to get in with my PT at least once a week, which is something that I didn't really do last camp because I was coming off such a long layoff. And, you know, I've been allowing myself to take days where my body is just like you, you need to take a day and sleep. You know, there's been a couple of times during this camp where I've like crashed for 15 hours and like just not even understanding why. And it's like, because, you know, your body is telling you you need it. So that's mm -hmm. pretty hard. I think for, um, at least athletes like us, like fighters, because we always feel like there's work to be done. There's always, we always feel like 
we have to keep pushing. But if you see other athletes that fight, uh, or not fight, but compete at a high level, football players, basketball players, like the difference between us professional fighters and other professional athletes is the recovery part of it. You know, other athletes, they do prioritize recovery. And I think for me at my age, it is important to make that a priority, staying up on my stretching, my mobility, keeping my water intake good, seeing my PT, you know, taking a day Mm -hmm. if my body really needs it. And yeah, I think that that is a kind of key to success in a, in a tournament like this. I did start training earlier than I think some of the other girls did. Um, you know, just from like stuff you see on social media and stuff. I think I was kind of back in the gym going hard, like two weeks before most people were, because I didn't take a lot of damage. Um, so yeah. 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 No, that's good. So that's, that's a very interesting point because I always say like PFL is, um, they made it very accessible to like new fans and everything. Like it, it's, it's a very, it's a league structure. It's like a very understandable sports structure. So it's probably like you guys are training more like athletes at team sports now that are competing more often, you know, more frequently. So that's an interesting yeah. uh, thing and an interesting adaptation, you know? Um, Absolutely. How, so how did this opportunity sort of come about, you know, to compete? Cause I'm thinking about it now. I'm like, you could be a millionaire by the end of the season. Like, does that yeah. sink in sometimes? Yeah, I mean, I plan on being a millionaire by the end of the season. But um, you know, I was I was scheduled to fight somewhere else and the opportunity popped up. And how can you say no? You know, I've been a professional fighter for almost 10 years. I've been to some really top organizations. Obviously, I fought for Bellator. Then I had to get, go back to the regional scene. And, you know, the last five years, um, besides this year of fighting, I've made like $3,000, if that, in fighting. Wow. But yet I've been in the gym every day, nonstop, constantly improving since, you know, the pandemic happened. And um, it just felt right everything felt right. And it kind of, I was actually, I was in Vegas with a friend of mine. He was getting ready for his fight week. I had just signed a contract for a different fight for a different organization. Um, and, uh, he, it was his fight week. He was getting ready and we were like hitting mitts. I was holding some mitts for him. And, um, uh, we were just talking about it, you know, like, oh man, like, you know, PFL's right around the corner. Like it's going to come like, you know, like they're, they just opened the 45, like this is for you. And literally as we're walking out, uh, cause we're hit mitts in like a tennis court outside. And like, as we're walking out, I get the text message. That's like, Hey, PFL's got an opportunity for you. Like, you know, I think we should take it. And I'm like, absolutely. Let's take it. You know? So we ended up taking that, that, that opportunity we ended up taking that fight and yeah here we are and I I don't regret it I think that sometimes you have to make decisions for yourself and for me like I I don't have another 10 years in, in this like the time is now and so it's time to go yeah so does that like the situation sort of the way it happened like change the hunger because I'm always saying like PFL, like the, the way they brought in like the million dollar tournament and PFL Europe that I'm covering here and here and there is like a hundred thousand. Uh, that still puts a different kind of emphasis on training, you know? Um, yeah, but, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So like, uh, you do kind of start to feel stagnant sometimes, especially being like on the regional scene. And I, I know I'm not the only fighter that's like, fuck, what am I doing this for? You know, you're not really seeing anything from it you're just training all the time, you know, and you're like, well, fuck, what am I, what am I going to do? You know, I'm 35 and you do, you start to feel a little stagnant when there's not kind of like a shiny carrot, like in front of your face and you're just kind of doing the same thing over and over every day. So absolutely being a part of this, like relit that fire. And it was like, all right, like, you know, all gas, no breaks. Like the time is now like do everything you need to do and, and get after it. And, you know, it's pretty much been that my mindset physically, like everything, it's just been to be the best I could be in this tournament, win or lose, you know, I just want to be the best I can be in this tournament and show everybody that like, yeah, you can do it Mm -hmm. and it's all worth it in the end for sure. It's like, it feels like kind of like when you build a business as well and you're like, 
you just have to persevere. You have to persevere. You have to believe in yourself the whole time. And then eventually that opportunity is going to come as long as you work hard for it. And, you know, like, um, does it feel for you like this is now your destiny kind of like because. Yeah. Because it's coming I, I, so late as well in your in your career. I just think that everything in life happens for a reason. And I feel like God's blessings, like they're not always on our time. They're on, on you know, God's time. And um, I do, I feel like this is exactly where I'm supposed to be. Uh, I don't think this is for accident. Um, PFL feels, feels like home. Everyone says, you know, I look very much at home here in PFL. I'm super excited to be a part of it. And I do, I think that, that everything happens for a reason and I believe in it. And I believe my faith is high in this one. I believe in destiny and and uh, I'm fully confident and I it's weird like I've had like surges of adrenaline but there were moments mm. like you know back in Bellator where I was like ah man I just don't feel like I should be here like I remember I was fighting Arlene and she was like 20 and four and I'm like I'm not ready like I shouldn't be here three and one like you know but now like mm. it's a totally different mindset it's like I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Like, not only am I at the table, but I'm bringing my own plate to the table and I'm sitting at the head of it. And yeah, it's, it's dope. It's really dope. And it's uh, nice to have all that hard work kind of start paying off a little bit. Yeah. And I'm sure like that four or five win streak all in the first round sort of plays into that confidence and like, you know, like, because a lot of fighters I talk to, like, they, they, they sometimes do suffer from, like, imposter syndrome, and it sounds like it's something, like, that's what you were going through maybe in Bellator, from what I understand, like, kind of from what you're describing. And now yeah. you're like, no, there's nothing to worry, like, I believe in my skills and all that. So what kind of shifted that, you know, what, what, what was the biggest shift you made, kind of, to suddenly get, get on this four-fight, first-round finish, winning streak? I think it's just the self-belief, you know, like going in there and just like 100%, like believing in yourself, believing in your preparation. I started doing work with a, a man named Richard Hart, who's a hypnotherapist. And he really like switched my mind, you know, to be able to visualize, mm -hmm. to see it. And you hear a lot of the greats talk about visualizing. You hear John Jones, Israel Adesanya, like all talk about like being able to see it before it happens. And that's kind of just where I'm at. And and I'm no longer counting myself out. Like my life is in a different place. Um, I've matured a lot emotionally, spiritually. Uh, I was, you know, my life wasn't, I was just going through like a lot of hard ships back then, like a lot of mental mm. stuff, like mental health is like a big play in a lot of this. And I just had to fix some things. I had to fix some things within. I had to fix some things in my life, which then helped me fix some things in my fighting. What was like, can you remember like the lowest point you were at kind of in your, in your fight career personally, you know, on a personal level, like what, what did you have to sort of overcome to get to that realization that you can like conquer that? Yeah, I was, uh, I think it was after the Jessica Baraga fight, you know, which was a fight that I could win any day, you know, and it's. Hmm give me that fight right now. I finish it in the first two minutes, like, you know, um, and I remember like walking out of the the stadium and just being like, I can't, I can't. I was in a really bad relationship. I just didn't have any kind of self-love. I was really insecure. I was going through a lot of stuff, you know, uh, mm -hmm. mentally, like I hadn't like gotten past the shit that was my mom and my dad. Like I was just letting like, I was just in this big pity party and I, I wasn't uh, training right. Like I'd show up, oh, well, I'm here every day. I'm at every session, but mentally I wasn't really there. You know, I wasn't putting in the work. I wasn't training hard. I wasn't doing everything I could do in the gym to be the best person I could be. And um, it did, I had to be real accountable with myself. And that Jessica Baraga fight was probably it. It was probably the one I needed the most because I just remember walking out of there and looking at my coach and being like, I I can't do this. Like, I'm done, you know? And he looked at me and wow. he said, he said, I love you too much as a person to watch you do this to yourself if I didn't believe you could be the best in the world. And like, that's one of the best coaches in the world. So somebody saying that to me, like I had to go home and I really had to uh, take a big look in the mirror and be like, all right, like 
there's no way that all these people on the outside of you believe in you more than you. So what are you going to do about it? Like, because at this point it's, it has nothing to do with anybody else. It's you. Like, what are you going to do about it? Like, how are you going to fix this? And I think the biggest thing was being accountable with myself and being very, very honest. Like, all right, you're slacking, bro. You're not like you're po- And that's even when like my relationship on Instagram changed. Like, if you notice, like I don't post a lot of training stuff. I don't post like, you know, mm-hmm. Oh, I've been here for four hours, four sessions <laughs> da, 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 because I was lying to myself. And it's easy to do that on, wow. on social media is I was lying to myself. I was lying to everyone else. Like, Oh, she's working so hard. But really at the end of it, I wasn't, I was skipping practices. I was not showing up. I was having breakdowns and just leaving the gym and all that changed for me Hmm. no that's that's interesting i was like because i was always like seeing the the pad work and everything and actually like sometimes i would not be in it like when i was training i'd not be feeling it you know sometimes you're going in there your rhythm is off everything is off and then one time i was like scrolling instagram and i saw you hitting the pads and that actually like got me back in the rhythm like at some point but you're saying like that's well, well, now yeah. these last couple of years, anything I post is for real. But there was a point in time, especially pre-pandemic, where I was just, it was a facade. You know, I was mm. lying to myself. I was just trying to make myself seem like I was doing the hard work and I wasn't. Nowadays, if you guys see me like post something like that, shit's for real because my, <laughs> my mindset has changed. Every time I step into the gym, I'm there. Like I'm there. I'm not mm. there for anything else but to work hard, train hard. I stopped training with just women, with smaller women. I started training with men and that honestly changed everything for me because men one are not emotional they don't take things personal and they don't fucking put up with your shit like they don't put up with your shit they're not gonna sit there and baby you like I have a a gang of of teammates you know all that are my brothers that when I start to to slip and they see it like they fucking call me out on my shit you know and they fucking and they fucking check me and they're like dude get your shit together like let's get to fucking work like save that that pity party shit for somebody else and yeah it's all it's all about being accountable man and it's all about being accountable to yourself and having people around you that are accountable that keep you accountable as well you know it's easy to have a bunch of people that are just like oh it's okay yeah right. but see that that means they believe in you you know that's what it is because if you don't give a shit like you're gonna baby someone you're gonna make whatever you know? but you're gonna show that tough love to people you actually believe in you know because like, otherwise what's the point you're not gonna waste your energy and time into something you don't believe in like absolutely absolutely so i'm definitely yeah. blessed to have a really good group of people around me now um that believe in me and care enough about me to call me out on my shit and not let me be my own worst enemy anymore so i am very very lucky for sure like moving in silence is a is a, is a big thing like i've been big on that in in business as well because the more the more you talk about things like the more you know also people are going to give their unwanted opinion you know if, if you you know where you're going or you have a belief and like you know the direction you're you're the only one that really knows the steps you're taking and like the direction you're going into so what's the point of sharing it with people who don't know exactly and people cast their own insecurities on you like you'll hear people be like oh you don't want to take that fight you don't want that fight ah man like i want no you wouldn't want that fight you know like (laughs) i want all the smoke (laughs) Yeah, you. I've had a few people be like, "Ooh, Larissa Pacheco," and I'm like, "Yeah, Larissa Pacheco." You know, because like, what's the point of doing this if you're not going to do it with the best in the world? Like, mm-hmm. you know, what's what's and that and that's the difference between I think um, people that are just doing it and the one percent of people that are doing it. You know, it. it people that just want to win are the ones that want to take easy fights and that don't want to test themselves or people that, I mean, of course we all want to win, but you hear it a lot. Like you hear people say, I just want to perform. I want to perform to the best of my abilities. And then I know like the triumph will come from that, you know, Mm -hmm. but then you hear other people or fighters just, just want to win all about the win. It's all about the win. And you know, those are the ones that don't take the risk. Yeah, to me, I mean, that feels like eventually that'll lead to some emptiness, you know, like at some point you want to reach some glory, you know, that's and and for that you have to fight the best names, you know, Absolutely. I mean, what's the point of having a 30, you know, record, let's say, and nobody knows who the hell you are, you know, like, 
the only way people are going to know who you are is when you face the people that people know who they are. You know, like that's, yeah. Well, and at the end of this, you you know, I just posted something that Chris Curtis was talking about, but at the end of this, like, you know, when you, when you look at the end of your career, like you want to be like, I did it all, you know, I left no stone unturned. Like you don't want to sit back and have regrets. Like, ah, if only I would have pushed a little harder. Oh, if I would have took that fight or, ah, I wonder what would have happened, you know, like you just don't want those. So you know the highs are high and the lows are lows and it's all about like the risk you know and sometimes you you got to go out there and you got to risk it all to get you know those feelings that you've been searching for Mm -hmm. no exactly that's that's true for sure and well now you're doing it at 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 bfl which is also the organization that i feel is like pushing the envelope the most and like they're the most innovative and like I've been at Bellator, worked with Bellator, worked with Bell- PFL and everything. And I always say like, even compared to UFC, like PFL to me is the most professional, the most accommodating one. And I was wondering about your experience too, because you've been at Bellator and you've cornered uh, Jessica Rose Clark, you know, a few times at the UFC. So you have that experience as well. How does PFL rank for you there? And, you know, how at home do you feel? Well, every organization is great in their own way. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Everybody does things in their own style. Uh, I have just been in the corner of UFC, so I can't really speak on the inner workings of it. But um, for me, PFL has been amazing. Like they do such a good job of making everyone just feel like a star and feel like, um, you know, what we're doing is really, really important. You feel like a professional athlete. Like you don't just feel like a fighter. They're super accommodating. They make sure you're completely taken care of. You know, the media days are just it's something I've never experienced before like that first week mm. when we did the whole media shoot with the, which is a lot of like some of the the stuff that you know they keep posting or people post amazing you know I've had PFL come to the gym a couple times during this camp and every experience has been just absolutely flawless they're so professional they're so well organized Ray Cepho is absolutely like a G you know and and like all the guys and all the owners and managers of PFL have really sat down with each other and put together a really nice organization that I know, like, I love being a part of and everyone else I talk to that's a part of PFL, it says the same exact thing. So yeah, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm super excited and um, really enjoy working for them. Does it work like, do you, do you know if they keep your spot? Um... For next season, like they renegotiate as long as you keep doing well. Like, uh, how, like, do you see no. yourself staying there for a while then? Or, I mean, yeah, hopefully. Like, yeah. I would love to, yeah. you know, win, lose, draw, whatever happens with this tournament. Like, I want to, I would like to be in PFL. I would like to be one of the players that comes back season after season after season. And, um, I think so far I'm on my, on my way for that. You know, I think that, uh, I've gotten some nice traction with the fans and I, you know, Mm. I like to think that I'm easy to work with. So yeah, I would love to be here. I want this to be home. I would love to, to finish my career here in PFL. You want me to be honest? For sure. No, I agree. I have no, I uh, I have no, I have no goals of getting to the UFC. They're just not doing anything with my division. They're no. Oh yeah. So it's like, it's like, why, you know, like why, yeah. Why not just stick with the place that's like helping us thrive? And the place that's growing to me is like this is the place where you're gonna invest, you know that and yeah. it's like such a it's like such a sport. Like I don't understand football and all that, right? But mm-hmm. you've got win or lose these teams, right? Of course they want to win like their championships or whatever, but you hear people talk about individual players like a lot. You know, people have their individual players that they love, and it doesn't matter what team they go to. Because, you know, football players like switch around often, Um, but people like form a relationship, they get invested. And I feel like PFL is giving that, you know, you get to watch some of the same people come back every season. You get Mm -hmm. to be invested in them, I guess, for like, you know, people that are into like, you know, betting and stuff like that. Like you've seen these people through these seasons, you see how they perform, you see how they work, you see all this stuff, you know, and I think that nowhere else kind of does that and it really does give it kind of like a a sport feel instead of just two people getting in there and just slugging it out 
Yeah, I would say like it's the UFC is turning into the WWE in a sense. Like there's no real clear way of how people are ranked and, you know, who gets to fight who. And it's just like at the end yeah. of the day, you, you think like there is a lot of internal influence in a way. Like they match people up according to who they want to win sometimes. You know, of course, there's upsets and everything. Like they don't. There's they don't, always they an don't agenda. Fight. There's an agenda. There's That's what it is. Yeah, there's exactly. always an and, agenda, and which I just love as fair this. as it gets. And yeah. I love the point system, right? You get an automatic two fights. Like, you know, you got to put in the work. And I know some people are like, oh, you know, a dominant three round fight should get more than like an easy like knockout. But it's like, these are the rules. This is the rule set here. Okay. Like this is a rule set. And um, yeah, like what? it is what it, it it is what it is. And all we are doing as fighters is fighting by the rule set. And it's point system, you know, like, I think it's like super even, like me and Larissa should absolutely be fighting one and three, two and four should absolutely be fighting, you know, like the way it's all the way down until you get to like the bottom there where there's kind of like mm -hmm. some stragglers, you know, but like, of course, like this is exactly how it should be. And yeah, well, that's I like styles make fights. It, it's that's the thing. Like anyone in combat sports can beat anyone on a certain, on a given day. It's like styles make fights. Um, I say it, it also like the point system kind of like pushes an exciting fight as well because everyone is trying to finish the fight. Sometimes it doesn't yeah. present itself, right? But like at least you're trying. And also people don't realize how difficult it is to finish someone. <laughs> I think yeah. I think people don't realize how difficult that is. Like train, yeah. like finishing someone is, 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 I guess it's easy to finish a random person, but to finish a trained fighter who's trained for that and not to get finished is fucking difficult. Well, and it really, like, at least for me, right, uh, you heard um, who's just a San Hagen talked about it when he just fought Cheeto. And he was like, you're going to come to a point where the person in front of you is just as skilled, just as as knowledgeable, just as hungry. Right. And it comes down to yeah. your mindset, like who who mentally is going to go in there? Who's going to give it more like who? And like, that's that. Those are the fights, man. Those are the beautiful fights. Those are the fights that you want to see. Those are the yeah. fights that stick in people's minds. And honestly, like win or lose, whatever. I want people to remember me and I won't be here forever. You know, just like everybody. And I want people to freaking remember me and be like, man, every time I showed up to watch Amber Librock fight, she was fucking phenomenal. And, you know, th th those are my goals. Like, yes, we all want to win. Yes, I mm -hmm. want to win. I know, though, when I perform to the best of my abilities, I win. So leave all that extra stress of like, oh, I got to win. And I just got to perform. I just got to do my thing. And mentally it does kind of take a little bit of weight off of you. And you actually enjoy what you're doing because if you're not mm -hmm. having fun, like what's the point of being in there and, and doing this, you know? I mean, I always enjoy your fights as well. And you see uh, win or lose, like I think only one of your fights has gone to a decision, right? And now, but yeah. now these, now those finishes are wins <laughs> so it's it's i'm sure it like excites you like it's it's great to be in your shoes um yeah did did you watch the the of course you watched the pacheco uh harrison fight i'm sure you mm -hmm. know last season it's a different weight class but um do you where where do you see your chances i mean because obviously there's completely different styles so she's gonna come out fighting completely different that fight has nothing to do with your yeah. fight or anything like yeah where do you see or how do you see the fight going? I guess where do you see yourself beating her? I mean, I see us I see a striking, you know, like I know that she's going to try to push for a body lock and like, you know, get me on the fence and do, you know, that kind of like thing that she does. But honestly, mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to keep this one on our feet, you know. I think that if that's what people want to see people want to see us fucking strike people want to see us fucking fist fight and i want to get into a fist fight i want to for for the last couple fights they have finished early and i haven't really been able to display like everything i've been working on with my hands and i want that and i hope that she wants that too you know i had that opportunity with martina but the head kick happened soon but now Oops. i hope that <laughs> Larissa wants that as well you know and I, I would like to go in there and have a, a a battle but I mean I'm I can do go anywhere as you can see like I've finished fights with the choke I've you know I can grapple yeah, I can ago. wrestle I can do it all I'm not a one-trick pony so I'm ready for wherever this fight's gonna go I just know me personally like I would like to stick in the middle and like throw some hands a little bit but we'll see 
that's a beautiful that's thing dope. about a that's fight. Dope. You never know. You, you never, never know. know. You never know. Because she might, she might be like, fuck that. I don't want to get head kicked. <laughs> let's just go ahead and let's just try to take this thing to the floor, which <laughs> I'm ready for that as well. Like we can, we can go, but yeah, like if I had my let's, way, we're just going to, if the fans had their way, you know, let's keep it. Stable. Yeah. Let's, yeah. We're just going to strike it out. <laughs> You always seem very like loose and everything and having fun, you know, like um it does does like because you 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 have the dances and everything and training and everything, and I have this theory that like being a good dancer or at least having the rhythm sort of like makes you a better fighter, you know, so do you believe in that? It helps, yeah, having rhythm helps, helps. and Footwork. just uh just having fun helps, you know, like it's long, mm -hmm. it's hard, everything we do, like you meet some people that are so fucking grumpy, I mean, of course you get grumpy, like I am in my you can ask the people closest to me right now. They're like, mm, <laughs> we're just going to leave you alone for a couple of days. But um, yeah, I think if you're having fun and like having rhythm absolutely helps because we are kind of dancing. Like we're just violent poets in motion and that's pretty much mm -hmm. what we're doing. So yeah, and having a little bit of rhythm absolutely helps for sure. So do you like incorporate that sort of in your warmups or anything before the fight? Uh, what are you listening no, it's to? It's just me. Uh, that's just honestly my personality. Like I don't like to say I'm a dancer. Like I like to gig, you know, like I'm a little bit more of a mm. gigger. I just like to, you know, feel it. Like I dance when I'm teaching. I dance in my kids class. Like obviously I dance at the end of fights. Like it's kind of just my thing. And uh, it's more of my personality than actually something I in, like intentionally do. Um, I did used to train with a guy that would say, shadow box to music, shadow box to your favorite tune, like try to catch mm. that beat. So yeah, if I'm shadow boxing and there's music on, like, of course, like, you know, I'm trying to catch the beat. And, but for me, it's more part of my, just my personality. It's just kind of who I am. And yeah, so it, it fits well, but it's not something I'm intentionally like, hmm, I need to dance for half this round and then shadow box for half this round. Yeah. So when you get that win, you're not, you're not going to, it's not a rehearsed little dance. You're just going to do what gets you. You're either going to get a dance you're or you're, or you're going to get tears. So it's like one <laughs> or the other with me, I'm either going to cry from excitement and just being so happy, or I'm going to, you know, get my little hyphy Bay area-ness going on, which is kind of what everyone got last time, which probably Absolutely. wouldn't have been so much if I didn't, if I wasn't so counted out in that fight, like pretty much everywhere I heard was, you know, her saying I could not strike with her. And I'm like, ah, come on, bro. Like put a little respect <laughs> on my name, like a little bit, like just a little bit. Cause you know, I mean, I'm well-rounded. I'm aware of her accolades. I don't know the odds or anything, but like, I wouldn't have thought, cause I, I'll, I'll put your striking as anyone like the Muay Thai is fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. But uh, it didn't feel like you were, uh, like it's like what what it happened and the, the type of celebration you had it felt like yeah i mean like i was expecting this like that's kind of like the feeling i got from you like yeah i mean if you know me so. you're like that's amber that is amber like but if you're not really <laughs> from where i'm from or know much of me you're probably like that was a little extra i got all kinds of comments for the most all my comments are amazing great i have great fans i have great supporters like i have a great following they're all super sweet super nice and always there for me but every now and then you get a few people where they're like mm, they just want to be little internet haters so yeah they'll but hate you need those ones we too. A clip go to a million views as well and then you see <laughs> also like surprises me how how little people like it also always shows you how little people know about the sport how little yeah. people know on what what's going on on the inside behind the scenes you know all that stuff i'm like no this is not how right it works. now like they'll make right their, now they'll my, give their opinion like it's fact yeah yeah right now in my comments because pfl has tagged me in a few things with like the ref cam which let me just say that here it's not a body cam it's glasses cam which is why the angle yeah. happened the way the angle did but there are people non-stop arguing with each other about this freaking view these glasses these camera cams and it's like 
man, like they've been going off for a couple weeks and then one, one little argument will stop and then a whole new one will pick up. And these people are just going at each other. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, people want to uh, have their opinion heard so bad. It's crazy, but I'll just put this on the record. It is glasses. It's not from a body cam. It's a glasses cam. And the reason why the view was the way it was is because the ref has to look her in her eyes and make sure that she's okay and like you know mm -hmm. able to get up but yeah the the arguments that are happening in some of those threads is crazy dude, dude, because people like just watch it like watch the event you'll see the referee wearing glasses that's what <laughs> it's as simple as like he's wearing them when he raises my hand i'm pretty sure like he's also got that, the glasses yeah. on <laughs> maybe they think he needs I, yeah i mean i'm, I'm sure they're not going to take a ref who needs to wear vision glasses, vision goggles. Yeah. Like, you need to be able to see. It's not like they're judges that need glasses. Like, that literally <laughs> have their eyes closed sometimes. Yeah. They're just not looking it at all. It is insane. This is great. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to go into that whole thing. Of course, that's a whole other discussion as well. But like. It won't be here all day. I don't know, man. Yeah. <laughs> so you talk about the Bay Area. Cause you have the Bay Area pride and everything. And like, if I'm going to go to the Bay Area and I want to like integrate into society. Right. What do I need to know? What are some things that I need to that'll help me out? Don't honk at people. <laughs> this ain't don't a place where people. you honk at people. Yeah, don't honk at people. <laughs> just just Let's let see. that keep going. No, the Barry is a, a great place. You know, it's super eclectic. There's like all different places. So it's like some areas are like super, super nice. Some areas are super, just like most places, you know, are super, super rough. But the Bay Area is like special. You know, we all have a special like energy. And if you're really, truly from like the Bay, like the East Bay, Oakland, Sally Andro, San Francisco, Hayward, like all this that kind of actually touches the water, Vallejo, Antioch, you know, Stockton, kind of like you know same as like mm -hmm. the nate diaz brothers like we're it's just a, a energy and a lot of us grew up rough and especially if you were born and raised here like a lot of it's like a uh, lower class community lower lower money like of course there's like rich areas but there's a lot of gang violence here there's a lot of drugs there's a lot of broken homes there's just a there's just a lot of stuff so when you're actually from from the bay it's almost like we're connected without being connected like you don't even got to know somebody like if i go to a different place and i meet someone from the bay area we're family we're instantly oh, family yeah. just because you're from the bay and i'm from the bay we are family um but yeah it's a special place it's a great place there's a lot of like hidden talent here whether they're rappers dancers actresses fighters um and it, it's a great place to be a part of rough or not it's definitely given me my my soul it's definitely given me my personality and i am very very proud to be where i'm from um and if you could if you ever like kind of look at the people that comment that are also that have known me my whole life we're all very proud because it's hard for some of us to make it out of this place and it's hard for some of us to come up and actually do more with our lives you know like if you would have known me 15 years ago I was supposed to end up on drugs probably in jail with like four kids and 18 different baby daddies just you know like a low life <laughs> but you yeah. know and and that's because that's the cards that sometimes you're dealt here but yeah it's a great place and just be open like you come here and you visit like be open be open to people mm. be open to the culture because there is so many different people here it's not one race or or one style or one this or one that i mean you know just be nice be easy on the freeways because the freeways get a little <laughs> rough and people <laughs> you know people like to get crazy in their cars for some reason but other than that it's a great place I grew up in the craziest place for cars. I mean, it was insane. But there is the opposite. It's like honking becomes such a normal part of the thing that like people don't even take it as disrespect. They'll, they're just like, oh, this is someone trying to voice their opinion. <laughs> That's like. Uh, there's you know, a good chance here. It. You honk at somebody or the wrong somebody. They're probably going to get out the car and try to fight you. Or, you know, they right, might try to yeah. boom, boom, <laughs> boom, you know. So you just got to be <laughs> careful. That's why I always tell people that come from the East Coast, like just don't honk at people here, you know, and like, oh, fuck, and especially, yeah. and especially right now we got a thing where, you know, uh, th they like to break into your cars on the freeway because like, there's so much the traffic <laughs> there. Yeah. There's so much traffic. So like you start like making yourself too noticeable, 
you might get a car pull up and your window yeah. and take all your stuff out of your car while you're just in traffic like nothing to do so you know just be careful of that and then if you go to the city and and oakland like don't leave your valuables out like mm -hmm. you nowadays you see people keep all their windows down in their car which i wouldn't do because i'd be more scared someone actually stealing my car but you know you just gotta you gotta gotta yeah, play things sense. right yeah you gotta have a little common sense around here but if you could do that like it's a beautiful place it's it's a great place to be a part of it's amazing you know People in, in South Central LA love me. That's like uh, similar where, where they're like. So my boy, uh, David Diaz, he fights at uh, BKFC. So I hung out with him a few times last time. And and it's like, he, he's like a smaller name globally. Or like, if you look at the whole BKFC roster, I mean, he's someone who like, you know, is a good talker and everything. But they, you see the support he gets, like when he does a meet and greet in South Central and everything. And it's the same thing you, you describe where like, oh, like one of us actually is like on this stage right now. And we're so proud of it. And it inspires People in small ways like change their life, you know, like uh, maybe you don't think you're making that big of an impact, but like to those communities, it is huge for someone because they know where, you know, how, you know how difficult it is to get out of it, I guess. For me, if I could, whether it's a, a little boy or a little girl or whatever, if they come up like how I came up, if I can just keep one of them safe, keep one of them following their dreams, keep one of them pushing past the cards that were dealt to them, like then my job is done. And that is why I'm always very proud um, to be where I'm from. I always like to speak up like, and if you know me, like I'm really good with kids. I'm really good with people with special needs. I'm really, I, mm -hmm. I, I connect well with people who come and grew up the way I grew up because a lot of us just needed guidance of some sort and it wasn't there. So if I could just be, and people watch sports, TV and all that. So if you could just be some kind of guidance, whether even if it's not people in the Bay Area, just anywhere in the world, if you could be some kind of guidance for somebody, um, which is also why I talk a lot about my mental health. And then I think that that is how you change the world. And I think that that is how mm. you make an impact. And, you know, it's not always about money and this and that. Like sometimes it's just about mindset. And um, I try to be very authentic of who I am. I don't try to pretend to be anything other than me in hopes that I could just be guidance for whoever, wherever, just somebody, you know, even if mm -hmm. it's just one person. Yeah. I mean, if it is one person, it's, it's like, it's a whole life. It's a whole soul you're changing in a way. Like that's not a, that's a big deal already, you know? So. Absolutely. So would you like to do some fan questions here? Yeah, did we got do some? It. Do it. Yeah, we got some. Um, all right, 1995 Zay, how do you deal with pre-fight nerves? Um, well, my hypnotherapist helps, helps. Uh, we change some words. We don't call them nerves. We call it adrenaline and, uh, you know, being nervous and excited, they both feel the same. So it's really about how you switch your, your, your wordplay with it. And, um, for me, I, uh, I'm going to do it anyways, right? The fight's going to happen. So I try to um, realize that I need that adrenaline to keep me safe, keep me where, keep me focused. And I don't make it bigger than what it needs to be. And I, I use it as a weapon. I use it as an armor. I use it as, I use it with me instead of against me. You know, people sometimes feel that burst of adrenaline and they're like, <gasps> Oh no. Whereas I feel like at least the last couple of fights, I feel that burst of adrenaline and I'm like, it's game time. Like that means I'm ready. And that means it's time to go. So I think it's definitely the way you talk to yourself and kind of the relationship you have with it. And you just kind of have to switch your mindset a little bit. Reframing the reality, your own reality, kind of like, you know, um, yeah. Brian underscore TKB 650. What high school did you go to? Have you ever been to Redwood city? I don't know what Redwood City uh, is, but <laughs> I've been yes, yes, I've been to Redwood City. I I don't like to say this because I don't want you know other kids to know, but I actually ended up dropping out at the end of ninth grade, so I never finished high school. But the high school I did go to was a continuation school in Hayward called Royal Sunset, um, and I was there for you know a little bit, uh, I think two years. But yeah, that's the high school I went to, <laughs> which was interesting yeah. for sure. Ever think a million dollars was on the table for you then? 
No, no, I didn't. I didn't really know what was going to happen, but I always like, honestly, the high school I went to, they wasn't teaching me much anyways. They were just trying to <laughs> kind of keeping us out of the way, if you want me to be honest, but yeah. Dropping out was a blessing. <laughs> I'm not condoning this, but I'm like sort of kind there of, for that of, specific the, one. Maybe there yeah. there are some regrets I do have not finishing high school. Obviously, not having a diploma is one of them. Um, I've always been super street smart, you know, so mm-hmm. that like I never have felt uneducated. But there are some things I wish I would have, you know, got to experience prom dances, kind of, you know, that it, which stuff. I probably. I probably would have never went to them anyways, but just kind of taking that (laughs) off the table for myself. Um, Yeah, there's a few regrets there, but yes, I've been to Redwood City and I went to Rural Sunset Continuation School in Hayward. (laughs) I I underscore am underscore PLH underscore junior. You guys have complicated names. Um, What is something you will splurge on with some of your winning purse? I guess he means the million. Uh, I don't really have plans on splurging. I have plans on getting myself out of some debt, which is going to be first <laughs> things first. Uh, maybe buy my That's animals, smart. some, some cool, fun stuff, you know, and I just want to, I want to move and that's pretty much about it. You know, I want to be in my own space with my cat and my dog. Um, if I could splurge on anything, me and my boxing coach, were just talking about this is buying a bathtub that actually fits me from shoulder to toe you like a, a soak-in tub that I didn't have to like either one way in or one way out of you know where uh-huh. I can just you know kind of whatever tub Shaq has in his house that is the tub I need in mine well then you're in that category you can talk to Shaq because you, you surpassed yeah, a million Shaq so, you know, you what's can, can up where it. I'm nowhere near as big as you but I feel that way and where are you buying your amenities because I need some um let me see samuel the god 90 do you believe in manifestation if yes what does it mean to you i think it's all about manifestation i think you've got to see it before it happens i think no matter what it is in your life like you have to manifest it you know you have to speak it Uh, i like what you said earlier about working in silence but you got to say it once or twice you got to speak it into the universe a little bit you know and um Mm -hmm. i'm big on manifestation which is why i work with my hypnotherapist because like it is just so easy for me to do now like completely see things i can smell i can feel i can all of it you know and it's nice to be somewhere before it actually happens especially in a sport like fighting because mentally i've been in these situations so many times that when they actually happen it's not new so yes sorry i had the hiccups um manifest manifest all the way and i absolutely believe in it yes so about manifestation like i would say uh yeah move in silence um there are people you share your stuff with, though. There's a very select group of, like, very close people. I'm sure that you, like, those are the people you kind of verbalize with. Those are the people that understand you. They know where you're going. People with a similar Absolutely. mindset. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. When I tell people move in silence, I mean, you're not announcing it all on social media to random people. I'm not telling my parents who don't understand the business I'm in or I don't tell, you know? Yeah. And, um, because I agree with you. You have to verbalize it. You have to get to a point where I think subconsciously you're always sort of thinking about your end goal in mind so that every place you're at you sort of also recognize the opportunity by itself like it automatically comes to you at some point because yes yeah you know absolutely Um, absolutely i'll give you the last one uh sabi jirani what do you want to be remembered for in the sport Uh, I want to be remembered for my performances. I want to, you know, be remembered as someone who is exciting. I want to be remembered as someone who was at least trying in some way to make the world a little bit of a better place through fighting. Um, Yeah. And I just want to be a memorable person. I want to, I want people to look back and be like, oh, you remember that fighter, Amber Lock, man, her fight put that on. Like her fights were amazing, you know, and I want, I just want to, um, like I said earlier, like, I just want to inspire people and, you know, what better way to do that than overcoming challenges and then going out there on the cage and performing to the best of your abilities and then being a really good person and having like a really good attitude about it all. And yeah, leaving your legacy on that. There we go. 
And I'm sure that head kick is going to be in the highlight reels for PFL for a while. So, you know, sure maybe it'll always be so. there. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Fuck it. Thank I'm you down. so much. I'm with it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do my Uber Eats order. Do you have any sort of because you're you're like you know staying on weight and everything? Do you have any like cravings or anything? I, I'm gonna have you decide my Uber Eats order today. I crave Taco Bell. Okay. Uh, it's not even something that I eat all the time, but for some reason when I'm in fight camp, it's and it's the first thing I eat after fight. But for some reason, it's Taco Bell and a Dr Pepper. Like that is my Dr Pepper. Yes, that is like my craving <laughs> right there. It's Taco Bell, Dr Pepper, one hundred percent. Dr Pepper and, comes up on some, this podcast a lot. And some it's buffalo the, chicken yeah. wings, buffalo boneless chicken wings. Giving me ideas. I'm probably gonna, yeah, I'm gonna do that. Let's let's do that. Let's get that order. <laughs> <laughs> hey, cool. Hey, have a have a good one. Thank you so much for doing yeah, this. Yeah, thank and you. I appreciate again, it. Good luck. Bye.